witches! Welcome to episode 139 of C3 Crystals, Cauldrons, and Cocktails. I'm River. And I'm Ren. And today we're going to talk about prosperity magic. Mm-hmm. And I, I think in these days we could all use a little bit of prosperity. Absolutely. <laughs> but first, what are we drinking? You're still fun. <laughs> not drinking anything fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What are you drinking? I am drinking iced tea. Okay. <laughs> just a sweet iced tea it's absolutely delicious usually i do uh unsweet because i'm not all about all that sugar Mm -hmm. but an iced sweet tea just sounded really good today (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you're feeling better i am feeling much better much better not a hundred percent but much better yes good and Mm -hmm. i am drinking uh my sparkling brute rosé that i like so much fancy Mm -hmm. well we didn't have time to try to well and you aren't drinking right now so Mm -hmm. we didn't have time to uh go over and try to figure out cocktails and stuff yeah i I mean i've got a bottle of wine we'll drink that we here we've been doing a lot of like lemon water and so i thought i was probably gonna have some lemon water just like water and lemon like that's literally Mm -hmm. it like no sugar Mm -hmm. not like a lemonade or anything right but i really wanted a sweet tea (laughs) that sounds good so all right let's get to it so what is prosperity magic it is a specialized branch of magical practice that focuses on attracting wealth success and abundance into your life that's what we all need right now. Absolutely. I need a little bit extra. Um, me too. This form of magic taps into the natural and spiritual energies of the universe to manifest material and financial well-being. Prosperity is the state of flourishing within the physical realm. This largely relates to abundance in terms of how we support ourselves, like the amount of money that comes in, but it can also... Um, go towards not just money but increasing other types of wealth like we can be prosperi- prosperous prosperous wow. in <laughs> other ways like think of mental health think mm. of prosperity of the earth i mean a lot of our ancestors it was prosperity as far as their crops that they really oh, wanted yeah. that True. they didn't necessarily care about money they wanted mm-hmm. to be able to they survive food, the winter yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so you know so maybe you can think about it in, in all of those ways. Mm-hmm. Prosperity of the earth for us might be gardening, mm-hmm. like your your little tomato plant that's <sighs> got one, one tomato on it. <laughs> one tomato. It was funny because I went and visited my grandma mm-hmm. this past weekend. What are we? When we were when are we recording? Yeah, so like a couple days ago, and <laughs> um, she has this whole garden and is so pretty. And she has, I cannot believe how many tomato plants this woman has. Okay. Oh, that's so funny. It's so, it's, oh my goodness. Does she do like farmer's market or something? I don't think so. She just eats them. But I'm like, how do you eat <laughs> that many freaking tomatoes? And oh, I she bet she. so many different types. She had like heirloom tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. And like, I'm telling you, like, if you could think of a type of tomato, she had it. I bet she makes some great like spaghetti sauces and salsas oh, and that kind of thing. Maybe, mm. maybe it's homemade spaghetti. Ooh. Mm. Okay. Anyways, um, but it was funny because I was like, yeah, like I planted a poblano plant that my cat ate, and <laughs> I have one tomato, and it's like a it's a yellow tomato, like a lemon tomato plant. I'm really excited about it, and it only has one tomato on it no buds like it's gonna (laughs) grow anymore and she was like oh honey (laughs) and I was like I'll send you a picture when I get home and so when I got home it was like the next day I sent her a picture and she called me and she never calls me and I was like oh no there's something like she wants to talk to me about my plant so she uh she's like what do you do to your plant like what kind of like food do you give it and I was like food and she was like yeah moon water <laughs> yeah I'm not, i can't say that because we're in the deep south so oh. um i love my grandma but oh my goodness and so she um i was like we i, I turned to my husband i was like we put on this blue stuff 
and it, it's Miracle Grow, but I couldn't think of the name of it. And we had put Miracle Grow in it, like on it, like when we were planting it. So we put it, mixed it in like the soil and everything, but we haven't mm-hmm. done anything since. Yeah. And so I don't know. We planted it maybe two, two months ago, three. I don't know. You, okay. The podcast knows better because I remember saying, I planted yeah. my plant this yeah. weekend. So if you go back and listen, like that's how many weeks ago. And so she's like, oh, you need to put some more and then maybe you'll get some more fruit buds and all of that. And then she started talking to me about all of her stuff. <laughs> you know, they got an app that, uh, well, I downloaded it, but it cost money. So I deleted it, but oh. you download it and it takes a picture of your plant mm-hmm. and it diagnoses it what's calculates wrong what's it. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And I've sometimes it's as simple like as that. adding like sugar water or, oh. you know, something like that. But I did the same and then it cost money. And so I was like, I don't have the money right now. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I don't need, I don't, I mean, maybe I do need an app that tells me what's wrong with my plants, but I don't want to know what's wrong with my plants. (laughs) We have Greg, we we just (laughs) send our pictures to Greg and he tells us what's wrong with our plants. (laughs) Yeah. It it made me feel better because my grandma, she was like, yeah, like I have so many tomatoes growing, but none of them are turning color. Like none of them are ripening. And I was like, oh, but but fried green tomatoes, man. Oh, true. But I was like, mine's not coming ripe either. So it made me feel better because my okay. tomato, it was like, maybe my tomato is just special. I mean, it's already special because it's just one <laughs> tomato, but I was like, maybe it's just special in the way that it's not ripening, but none of hers are ripe yet. So maybe it's not quite there yet in the season. Yeah, maybe or it's something. not time. Yeah. For the season. Yeah. So it made me feel a little bit better about my one tomato. <laughs> I love it. It's what are you going to do with that so one sad. tomato? I don't know. It so needs special. to be something special. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe <laughs> maybe I can dice it up and put it in a salad or something and, that would be and fun. honor my tomato plant in that way. I, like I need to tomatoes use it though. In my omelets. Do you like tomatoes in your omelets or not? I'm not a big fan of a warm okay. tomato. That's what a lot of people say when I say that. They're mm-hmm. like, ooh, that's gross. It doesn't <laughs> sound like, very, very I like appealing it. <laughs> to me. Now, there is a dish on uh, my husband's side uh, of his family that they dice their tomatoes with onions and like cucumbers and they put it in like mm. vinegar and oil and like salt pepper. Oh my goodness, it is delicious. I grew up, I grew up mm. with that as well, except I don't think there was onion in it, but I think it's a southern thing with mm-hmm. cucumbers and and tomatoes and some kind of vinegar or something. Mm-hmm. It's like oil it, and it, vinegar. It might have had uh onion in it too i can't remember oh the onion makes it It, and i hate onion like raw onion i don't like raw onion but it's mm. pretty good like all the flavors really work well with that and look at us we're already we're already talking about totally (laughs) off topic i know but there's also you can think about uh prosperity and Uh enriching our own lives like family and friends so prosperity spells aren't just about bringing money it might be about about bringing more closeness to your family, mm-hmm. more joy to your family relationships or your friend relationships. That's true. That's very friends. true. Yeah. yeah. So it's not mm-hmm. just money, although it's not right just now, money, even money though would be a good thing. <laughs> money is very, it's hard right now in these yes. freaking times. So, yes. Yes. Um, so t- talking of prosperity, we always talk about the history and where this yes. kind of comes from. I feel like we haven't talked about the history of something in a little bit. Hmm. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I feel like we haven't podcasted know. in a while. So I, just I can't remember kind of what like I did not... yesterday. So I have no idea. Okay, exactly. Right. And you eat warm tomatoes. So I, yeah, <laughs> right. So I'm um, defective anyway. Uh huh. Uh huh. So the roots of prosperity magic can be traced back to ancient civilizations as it always can. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, in Egypt, amulets and rituals uh, dictated. Uh, I mean, dedicated to the gods and goddesses of wealth were a commonplace. Mm-hmm. So um, Osiris is one of the, we, we've talked about Osiris before. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so uh, primarily they're known as the god of the afterlife where, and he's also, I think it's a he. I'm, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Uh, he is also associated with fertility and the cycles of nature. So I feel like prosperity and if you want to associate your prosperity maybe magic rituals whatever for the earth if you're working with osiris a little Mm -hmm. bit in this uh, Mm -hmm. because he uh, does go with these cycles of nature 
Mm-hmm. And then particularly the flooding of the Nile, which brought agricultural prosperity as well. So that's, that's what mm-hmm. they're known for. And then you have Isis, the a wife of Osiris. See, I was right. Mm-hmm. Osiris was, is a man. Mm-hmm. If you want to genderize the gods. Um, that's right. Yeah. So Isis was a goddess of fertility, motherhood, and magic. She was considered a protector of the pharaoh and the nation, ensuring prosperity, prosperity, and fertility. Okay. So if maybe I'm, she... I'm, in my mind is like a vibe for if you're wanting to harness fertility in any type of way, maybe that's Mm -hmm. your fruits of your plants that you're planting Mm -hmm. of fertility Mm -hmm. or yourself or your, or somebody that you love who's maybe wanting to start a family or Mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that this goddess would be some, something to work with. To work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have Hathor, which is often depicted as a cow or a woman with cow horns, which sounds badass to me. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, she was the goddess of love, beauty, music, and joy, which I've never heard of her before searching up prosperity in hmm. Egypt, which is hmm. interesting because I'm all about everything Egypt. Yeah, you are. Mm-hmm. She was. She also represents the fertility and the abundance of the earth. So maybe okay. she has the abundance of the earth and fertility. So maybe she's maybe more correlated to fruits of plants and all of that mm-hmm. than maybe like not your just garden, your maybe. fertility, your partners or whatever. I mean, I like the idea of, of getting the little statues for certain deities and mm-hmm. like a deity that's, oh, that's, a fertility for earth and putting mm-hmm. it in your garden to yeah. help the fertility. Oh, that in would your be garden. so beautiful. Mm-hmm. My uh, speaking of my grandma, because uh, my grandma is apparently prevalent in all of this conversation. She would be <laughs> shaking right now. Yeah, um, she would. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she had little baby cherubs all around her garden mm. with like the wings, like like little angels. Oh, right? how funny! Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, when I think of her garden with the little cherubs and stuff. You can go to my garden that I will have in the future, and I will have uh, Egyptian deity statues everywhere. <laughs> I love it. I'm working on my pinnacle garden out back. So, oh, how is that coming along? I have the rocks for okay, it. Okay, great. <laughs> I Slowly. haven't done. The, I'm gonna do. Uh, I've decided I'm gonna do the pinnacle for one of the circles, and I'm gonna do another circle that's a spiral. And I've grown. I've, I grew basil from seed that's Ooh. ready to transplant. I've got dill that's ready to transplant. Ooh. What else do I have out there? I think, what is the thing that both of us weren't doing well and Greg helped us with? Lavender. Lavender. I got some lavender out there. So everything's ready to transplant. Is your lavender doing well? It's half dead. Half, <laughs> I mean, literally, like when you look at it, one side of it is dead. Oh, my roots, like the roots of mine are brown, but the tops are green and I'm getting new growth. (laughs) Yeah, like literally half is still green and growing and the other half is brown. I don't know what I did. It's all right. But maybe it'll be happy when I transplant it, but I've hurt my back, so I I can't do that right now. I really think that the heat, I think it's the heat. Well, you know what's funny is it's the side that's facing the sun Mm. that is brown. Uh, Yeah. So maybe it is burned. Heat. Yeah. Because I have mine right in direct sunlight, which is what it says. It needs to get at least six hours on mm-hmm. mine, which is what I read on the little note that came with my little lavender <laughs> plant. And um, it gets at least six hours, but I think the sun is so hot that it's it scorching is. it. My husband set up a, a sprinkler system for our garden because mm-hmm we go on trips all the time and there's so much shit to do. It's not even funny, but anyway, we don't want our garden to die while we're gone. Mm -hmm. And he just had to step it up to watering once a day. And he's Mm -hmm. moved all of my plants down into that watering zone so Mm -hmm. that they aren't going to, because I haven't had with my back. I I don't know what I've done. I mean, I mean, we usually, we have, when we ever, wow. Wow. When we plant our plants and we've, we've lived in our apartment for a good, like at least five years. Mm -hmm. And so we know what, where, what corner they need to go in, what size Mm -hmm. pot. And we usually do the same plants, like tomatoes, some sort of pepper. I usually have a bunch of flowers, et cetera. And they're in the same location as always where they used to usually flourish and et cetera. 
And this year, they all of my plants are struggling. It's hot this year. It's very hot. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I think that there's, there's, that that's why they're struggling. Yeah, maybe so. And we're off topic again. And again, again. <laughs> off topic. Yes, that didn't okay. take long, did it? No. So moving to uh, Rome, they mm -hmm. also have gods of prosperity. So you have Fortuna, the goddess of luck, fate, and fortune, where Fortuna was one of the most widely uh, you know, known deities in Roman culture and honored. She controlled the destiny and prosperity of individuals and the state. So that holds a lot of well, power. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's the one I had actually heard of before we did the research for this mm -hmm. episode mm -hmm. was, I mean, obviously Fortuna, she's got us a fortune. Yeah. Obviously abundance. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't quite connect those. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, and then you have the goddess of agriculture. And how do you pronounce their name? Ceres, I believe. Ceres. I didn't want to say... I didn't want to mispronounce it. I mispronounce everything, but I didn't want to <laughs> mispronounce it. Uh, so Ceres is the goddess of agriculture, grain crops, fertility, and motherly relationships. Hmm. Um, she was crucial for the prosperity of land and the abundance of the harvest. So I feel like she okay. was probably in Rome, probably honored quite a lot when you mm -hmm. came down to wanting your crops and everything to be healthy and abundant and mm -hmm. all of that. And then you have abundantia, <laughs> which is a Latin word. It's where the word abundance comes from. Yeah, I assumed that mm -hmm. uh, Fortuna went over my head, but abundantina right on the mark. I don't know. So um, it, the she is the personification of abundance and prosperity and was often depicted with a cornucopia symbolizing mm -hmm. the endless supply of resources and wealth. Yeah, I learned about the Roman ones mm -hmm. in college when I took Latin. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And then you have Pluto, where he was the Roman god of wealth, and he represented material prosperity and riches. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if you're wanting to work with a Roman god or goddess, and you want like material wealth and prosperity mm -hmm. maybe pluto's the one that you need to honor somehow or have some sort of you know statuette or piece of mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. yeah for sure and then in the middle ages uh european people <laughs> european <laughs> people um europeanians European, yeah uh folk in their folk magic included uh numerous charms and spells aimed at attracting wealth Mm -hmm. You have to think that uh, things were bad at this point in yeah. the Middle Ages. So people were always trying to seek out prosperity magic to help their situations. Mm -hmm. So the use of herbs, symbols, and spoken incantations became very apparent in these practices. Mm -hmm. And as witchcraft evolved and modernized, these ancient traditions were preserved and adapted, forming the foundations of sort of what we have today of mm -hmm. prosperity magic. Yeah, for sure. So what are some tips for using prosperity magic? Mm -hmm. Well, number one, you got to be consistent. The regular practice and enforcement of prosperity magic helps you maintain that flow because you might go into it and you're like, I'm so excited I'm going to do this. And then you forget about it. And you, you know, so you don't want your abundance to wane. You want no, it to yeah. be, you just want to do this consistently. Mm -hmm. You want to be grateful. Expressing gratitude for existing wealth and success attracts more of the same. It's so Did hard you, to do that, though. I know. But I think we all... nowadays, you get caught up in what you don't have. I know. And miss what you do have. That's why we should ha all have a gratitude journal, honestly. Mm -hmm. Back to the journals again. Mm -hmm. But at the end of every day, just write one thing that you're thankful for mm -hmm. for that day. Mm -hmm. I think it's super important. Do you know that? Uh, did you know that <laughs> gratitude boosts mental health? It's actually been linked to lower levels that. of stress and depression. It yep. promotes positive emotions. It helps build resilience against negative experiences, mm -hmm. but it also improves your physical health. I mean, I think it's obvious mentally 
that people that are grateful are mm-hmm. in a better place mentally, but it mm-hmm. helps with your physical health as well. Grateful people tend to have fewer aches and pains, better sleep, stronger immunity systems, and studies have shown that gratitude can lead be- to better overall health and longevity. So wow. just being grateful promotes prosperity. So I think that's a, a big component as a tip for prosperity magic. Hmm. Sounds like I need to be more grateful. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Ensure that your pursuit of prosperity is balanced with ethical considerations, that it doesn't Mm. harm others. Like Mm -hmm. we talked about this before, where I wish I had a million dollars and then your grandmother dies in an air crash and you get a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, yeah, yeah. You have to be very precise on where it comes from or. mm -hmm. And I I, I don't. I don't like the idea of hurting other people because, you know, they, people think some people think, or you see it on TV shows Mm -hmm. where, Oh, robbing a bank doesn't hurt anybody, but it does because prices then go up and because the bank then has to cover the insurance to cover, you know, so it does, it hurts Mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful. Also think about, I don't know what the, what the, what consequences would be of saying, I'm going to win a million dollars from the lottery. Mm-hmm. That's true. Like, what are the consequences then? I don't, I can't think of any bad consequences unless the person has, some other person has the winning lottery ticket and something happens to them and you end up with that lottery mm. ticket. I don't know. Interesting I don't know. to think about it that yeah, way. There's all kinds of devious ways mm-hmm. that that something Things could happen could go wrong yeah so you so would need to like mindful. sit down with a list and be like this 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 and make sure you mm-hmm. cover all your bases before if then if you give a mouse a cookie mm-hmm. you know <laughs> uh-huh. yeah for real um and then there's the ethics to think about this the whole ethics thing this whole topic of prosperity magic makes me think of that charmed show and i know i've talked about this before the original one and in that show they harm they went in and said you you do not use magic for personal gain Hmm. and it was such i remember that one episode where um it was phoebe and she the neighbor always had their dog poop in their lawn and he wouldn't clean it up and so one time she just did a little bit of magic and put the you know swiped with magic and made the poop go onto his shoe Mm mm-hmm and in the future, she got sent to the future to to, te- to learn the lesson. And it, it evolved into that guy then realized they were witches and it became a witch hunt. And she was being put to death in the future. And a very, very interesting. Um, that was quite the leap, consideration. though. Consideration. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a good one. If but, anybody else I mean, ha- has watched it, they know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but think about it. Any. Any type of usage of magic where you're trying to help soothe your anxiety, that is trying to help benefit you. True. So that's true. I don't know if I have the same opinion on using magic in a certain way. Yeah, I I guess it's what is the definition of personal gain? Mm-hmm. You know, are we talking about using it to go win the lottery every weekend or are we talking it about about it? and bringing our joy to our families and doesn't you know, feel like that's in, personal gain all lives. the way around i think yeah. any instance where you do something it's always going to have personal gain because you... yeah why else would we be doing it yeah why else would we be casting a spell I mean, like if we to aren't help want... people but yeah. in a sense that's personal gain because it makes you feel good and it makes you feel happy for Mm -hmm. helping those people, whether it's like an intentional, yeah, I'm going to do this. So I feel good. Or if it's just like a subconscious, like you're happy because you helped those people. Yeah. I read an article about how there is supposedly no such thing as um, true charity. That's not the right word, but that, I mean, that that makes sense. Yeah. Because true. Yeah. Yeah. If you, when you're giving things, you feel good about it. And so therefore mm-hmm. it's really self-serving as opposed yeah, because to because it makes you feel mm-hmm, good. Mm-hmm, yeah. That there really is no such thing as true mm-hmm. charity. I mean, 
in a sense, you just want somebody else to be happy as well. So let's say Mm -hmm. there's someone who's homeless and you're able to provide maybe a night in a hotel for them. You give them Mm -hmm. food, you give them water, you maybe give them some cash if they need Mm -hmm. it or whatever, like whatever it is. And you feel good because you made them happy or Mm -hmm. whatever. But then it's also like they needed it and you wanted to help. a difference between self-righteous goodness and goodness just to help, even though, yes, that does make me feel good to help Mm -hmm. somebody. I'm not doing it to turn around and say, look at what I did. I helped all these people. So you should vote for me because I kiss babies. And I, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there it's, there is a different level of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we can have a whole debate on personal gain and what right and that what is. that means. Yeah, but you all should go watch that Charmed episode of the uh. original Charmed. It's a good one. <laughs> it, it's thought provoking and it goes right with this topic of prosperity. Magic. Yeah. So some positive views on all of all of this on the prosperity. ethical side of things. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, you have manifestation and self empowerment. Now we could still talk about. Po- personal gain, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because all of this is basically personal gain to better yourself Mm -hmm. and be the higher, what is work on the higher frequencies and Mm -hmm. vibrations that you want to. Um, But many practitioners see prosperity magic as a way to manifest their goals and dreams. And, you know, I, at, at New Year's, I made myself a manifestation board. And so that, mm-hmm. I guess, is prosperity magic, too. It's things that yeah. I want to to hope for. Yeah, so like I can your see that and positive ambition. That's a that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. To, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It is viewed as a tool for self-empowerment, helping individuals align their intentions with their actions and to achieve financial stability, success, overall, like overall well-being, whatever it may mm-hmm. be that you your desire is. Mm hmm. Uh, mine would be financial stability. <laughs> I know we're over here joking. Like it doesn't always have to be about money, but sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it does. that's the answer for you to be calm in the brain. <laughs> you know, they, they have these, these things where it's having money doesn't make you happy. Look at the rich people and they're all unhappy. They're and I'm like, yeah, unhappy. but, like, but they are full and they have their lights on and they have heat. Yeah. No, it's, you know, all, we say that like my husband, I turned my husband and I was like, you know, it's like, we're, we're fine. You know, we have a roof over our heads. We're mm-hmm. able to eat food. Like I'm very mm-hmm. grateful. Right. And all of that. And he was like, well, where would you rather be crying in your apartment in the middle of nowhere or in a yacht? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the yacht. I'll cry every day on the yacht. Yeah, and I was like, I guess I would cry on the yacht. <laughs> but I mean, it's just stuff like that where it's like, it's funny because people do say like money isn't everything. Mm-hmm. And that's not something that you should always wish for, which I agree. There are other things that you could wish for, but money does solve a lot of problems. Yeah. I, I think that that is a, a true statement for people who aren't in poverty. hmm Mm-hmm. you know, who aren't struggling who aren't to feed their children and aren't every night. Paycheck yeah. to paycheck and, oh, should I pay for food or gas this week type yeah. of thing. There are, so, you know, there are so many children that are hungry and they, uh-huh. you know, we, mm-hmm. I don't want to get on a soapbox. Exactly. But um, anyway, but yes. My wish would be financial stability right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have spiritual growth and abundance mindset. I also need this. Um, so some believe that prosperity magic can foster a mindset of abundance, shifting focus from scarcity to plenty, which I've been trying this. I really mm-hmm. have. Um, where if there's something that we don't have, I'll be like, oh, it's fine. I'll just buy it at the store. Even if I don't have enough money to just go and buy it at the store, I'll just like, oh, yeah, we'll we'll buy that next time. And then somehow, Mm -hmm. some way, we always end up with enough to buy whatever we need next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I make it so that my spells go from just barely making it and if something, (laughs) it always works out somehow, right? Just barely making it to having enough. And more yeah. than enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this can lead to positive psychological effects, which it has mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on me for sure. And I think then that's such exactly as, what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Such as increased confidence and a proactive approach to life's opportunities. Something will mm-hmm. always sh- work like, out, present itself when you mm-hmm. need it. 
Mm -hmm. So balancing energy exchange is also something that I found very interesting under the ethics part, where in some traditions, magic is seen as an exchange of energy. So prosperity spells and rituals might be seen as balancing the energy one puts into the universe with the one that like with what one receives. So emphasizing, I've just messed this whole thing up, emphasizing a (laughs) harmonious relationship between giving and receiving. That I like that thought. I thought this was very interesting because that is a very pro prosperity magic. uh There's a lot of and I I'm guilty of this too, a lot of take 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 and you mm-hmm. just want things versus mm-hmm. you actually providing and giving to others or giving in general to the universe your energy mm-hmm. being given as well instead of you just taking the energy i thought it was rather i thought it was interesting i'm guilty of that as well i'm guilty of just being like okay i just need a freaking break universe why aren't you helping me yeah but i take all the well- energy and i don't replenish any either so this one kind of makes me think of karma you know you get back what you put out mm, and so that too. That, i'm i guess know. i'm thinking in my my shoes right now where i ask and try to manifest things my manifestations have not been manifesting <laughs> mm, well <laughs> you're distracted you are totally True. distracted but, and you've got to do magic you've got to be totally focused and you are not right I have now a clear head and i always mm-hmm. manifest before sleep Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's when I'm the most focused. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, I guess things have changed. Like a lot has happened in the past like couple months for me. And Mm -hmm. so maybe that's why they're not working, but just things. Or maybe the universe is just playing a sick joke on me and provides me opportunities that I don't like. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) That I'm like, no, and I, I ignore it. So then the universe is like, okay, then fuck you. I'm not going to provide you anything anymore. <laughs> well, it's like that meme we talked about. I don't know what episode it was recently where the guy's like, you know, I'm I'm manifesting more money. And his boss calls and says, guess what? You get to work a double shift next week. Oh, yeah. And he's yeah, like, yeah. I, you know, but yeah, that but was more money. At the same thing, at the same thing, I have the joke. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's my life. That's the joke in this instance. (laughs) So I always manifest uh, prosperity in a way, but in like financial stability, but in a way Mm -hmm. of like me securing a more stable job position Mm -hmm. or my husband's a more stable job position, et cetera, Mm -hmm. where we can just be stable. And it's funny because I always talk about like money, but I always say just stability, like financial stability. Mm-hmm. And we play our video game. Okay. Mm-hmm. You see where this is going. I am rich in my game. Oh, how funny. I think it manifested <laughs> in ways in your game <laughs> that I did not intend. I meant in real life, not in <laughs> video games. But but it's funny because we'll be doing something and we'll be, you know, loot like like we loot the things that we do like in the game and we just get so yeah we just get so many like coins and gold and all of that and like man my money has like doubled in the game since like i'm I'm poor in the game too yes no (laughs) i am like (laughs) i am pouring out of my ears and gold in my game and i'm like my husband's like i think my manifestation has gone to the wrong location the wrong place (laughs) my husband's like apparently i'm not getting it anywhere because my husband's like why why don't you have them he's like go to the auction house and buy such and such and i'm like i don't have any money he's like what do you mean you don't have any money and i'm like i just i don't he's like what do you spend it on woman i'm like i don't know yeah, no, it, I don't think you just need to start manifesting money and stable and, and, I'll and be stability. Rich in the game. And then you're going to once as soon as you <laughs> log into your game, boom, you're going to have so much. It's oh, a sick joke. Funny. It's a sick joke that the universe likes to play on me. <laughs> well, tell us about the cons ethically. So, yes. Uh, off topic again. Um, <laughs> yes. So you also have materialism and uh, spirituality. Yes. So critics argue that focusing on material gain through magic can lead to materialism, which I agree, Mm -hmm. Um, which may be at odds with spiritual growth. Now Mm -hmm. I'm going to go off topic for just one second again, because (laughs) I I agree to disagree. So being I, I was raised in a very comfortable household. 
Mm -hmm. right? Financially, we were very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So to ask for anything, of course, my parents were like, no, you can't always have everything you want, you know? Mm -hmm. So no, you can't have that. But a lot of the times when I was like, Hey, I really want um, to go out with my friends and go shopping. I was able to, right? Mm -hmm. So I was able to buy that shirt that I wanted without feeling guilty for anything. Cause my parents mm -hmm. always ensured us we were fine. Mm -hmm. And so um, teenage friend, obviously, would go and buy the shirts and not have that type of guilt of, uh, oh, I like things. So mm -hmm. I've always had a problem with materialism because I grew up ah. being able to have everything. And so when, you know, I met my husband, we got married, moved out, et cetera, I still had that problem of materialism. And it, I never had any anything where I was trying to be materialistic in any way. It's just mm -hmm. like, and I don't blame my parents in any way either. It was just like a big shift from me being able to have the things that I want to me not being able to afford anything, but still buying the stuff through mm -hmm. whatever means to have it because I needed to have it in that yeah. moment. Yeah. But now that I've, we've grown and I've learned a lot about finances and mm -hmm. what to spend my money on and what not to. Now I'm not perfect, obviously, but I will say that materialism is something that can be learned and unlearned. Okay. In a sense, because so that now, would be the when downside. When I walk into a space, right, I yeah. don't have any like a store, right? I don't have a desire to be like, I need this or else I'm going to die type of mm -hmm. feeling. I mean, it's not like that, but so it's like an have, intense feeling. You have spiritually grown then. I think so. And mm -hmm. so I feel like even let, let's say there is materialism and like you, you focus so hard on these materialistic items that you become materialistic. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I, that I think makes you can 100%. Un, you can unlearn it. Okay. Which is what I want to say. Based on okay. my my experiences, I have unlearned being materialistic. Now I'm not perfect. So there are still things where I haven't, like I, it catches my eye, like everybody catches my mm -hmm. eye. And I'm like, Ooh, I, I really that. want it. I really I want, want it. it. <laughs> but instead of just going and being like, yep, that's it. I need it. And without regards to what's in my bank account, if I need to mm -hmm. eat food, if I need gas, whatever, mm -hmm. it's much better now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they do caution against using spiritual practices primarily for acquiring wealth. It can, it might also divert from a deeper spiritual purpose, but I, I disagree because I feel like okay. if you do somehow develop a materialistic feeling, mm -hmm. then I feel like it will make you better in the end if you unlearn it as well. Like, I feel like there's, there's a lot of growth that can be on both okay. ends. Okay. So I wouldn't technically say it's like a pro or con. So you're more like just be mindful of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because you can prevent yourself from going down yes, that path. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So okay. if you want to focus and gain things through materialistic purposes, I would say go for it. Just be mindful. Okay. Wow. I summed up everything that I said in the last 10 minutes into two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then this other one is also, also very important. You can build, you can kind of have a dependency on, on this and a disillusionment, illusionment. Did I say that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, there is a concern that reliance on prosperity magic might lead to dependency where individuals might expect magic to solve their problems mm -hmm. without taking practical steps, uh, i.e. me. Um, <laughs> and then additionally, unrealistic expectations might result in, you know, the disillusion, illusion, I'm having a hard time with that word, if the <laughs> desired outcomes are not achieved. Yeah, I, so, I like, I, I like that point to the the point I like that point to the point. I like that point to the point. <laughs> um, I think they're correct that if you become dependent on just going to magic for the answer to every problem, that that's a problem in and Me. of itself. I always talk to the universe. I'm like, fuck. I universe. mean, I do as well, <laughs> but I don't. That doesn't prevent me or you from stepping up and doing what needs to be that's done. True. You, know, true. you still, we but don't rely, we're not going to sit back and just say, oh, the, magic will do it for me. Uh, that's so true. And, but I say, I said that the other week and then apparently that wasn't what needed to happen in my life because universe said no and like mm -hmm. did a 180 and mm -hmm. slapped me in the face. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was trying myself 
to Mm -hmm. pursue this and boom no absolutely not universe said no and so I don't know what I don't know I don't know what it wants I don't know what I want I don't know anything (laughs) Mm -hmm. but a common view is that magic should be you know that one yeah trying to say that it should aid you as opposed to that's a good word it should be there for you to help you but not for the sole purpose yeah yes yeah yeah i think i think for sure it's a way to enhance what you want to do but you got to do the work too absolutely yes i think that that yeah sums up what we just said in the last 30 minutes of this episode (laughs) yeah so just fast forward to this part back up (laughs) 10 seconds and then that's it (laughs) So I wanted to, again, because that person was so unhappy because we don't talk about the the magic component, I Mm -hmm. thought I would tell you a, or tell everybody, a simple sample prosperity jar spell, because you know me, I love my jar spells. Yes, yes. So of course you need a, a glass jar with a lid and a green candle because that symbolizes money or growth or abundance. You might want to collect herbs like um, basil, cinnamon, mint, and bay leaves, all of those are associated with wealth and prosperity. Mm-hmm. The crystals that are stones of abundance are things like citrine and pyrite or green a- aventurine. You want some s- shiny coins, um, mm-hmm. paper and pen to write your intentions, a uh, gold or green ribbon to seal the jar, and you might put essential oils in there uh, like uh, bergamot, bergamot or patchouli, or you can uh, anoint the candle with those or the jar with those. And then you're going to need a lighter of some kind to light the candle. Mm-hmm. So as always, you set your intention, just like we have honed, uh, harped on this over and over again. Always. Um, what? And again, we recommend using your journal to help you really narrow down what it is your focus is, what it Mm -hmm. is your intention is. Mm -hmm. But you write it down. Once you figure out what that is, it could be financial wealth, career success, overall abundance, whatever it is you're wanting to do. You write that down on a piece of paper in a positive and present tense. You don't want to use past tense. You want to use the present tense as if it's already happened. So I am attracting abundant wealth and success into my life, that kind of thing. Yep. Go ahead and cleanse your tools in your space. Okay. You want to make sure there's no negative energy there. You cleanse it, whatever method you like to use, whether it's incense or salt or water, water, whatever it is that you do to cleanse your, your space. You cleanse the jar. I usually use incense or some kind of smoke to clear my, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, to clear mm-hmm. my jars crystals and other tools so that all negative residual energies, especially if you're reusing tools like we talked about last last week, whenever it was that we talked about how to take, you know, reusing spell components, mm-hmm. you want to make sure that whatever you did before with these things or whoever had them before, if you bought them from a store, it, you, you want to cleanse all of that out. Mm -hmm. So prepare your jar. You're going to place a few coins at the bottom of the jar as the foundation for your prosperity. And these coins represent wealth and material abundance. And then, you you know, you could also use uh, a green jar or whatever color it is for the particular prosperity you're going for. I like that idea. They have beautiful colored glass jars. Did you know that glass isn't clear in its natural form? You probably did because you know this kind of stuff, but it's actually green naturally mm. and so to, to get clear glass the iron content and the molten glass has to be reduced in order to get the clear glass that we're so used to seeing in our bottles That's cool that is cool so you would rather green the jar. green mm-hmm. i want the green bottles mm-hmm. i don't don't give mm-hmm. me a clear bottle give me a green bottle yeah <gasps> And also, did you know brown glass reflects UV light? And that's why beer bottles are brown and not clear. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. I love them. I guess they're not, br- they are brown, but they're more of like an auburn. They're not as dark as the beer bottles, but I have like little jars that are like this auburn color. Love oh, fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you add your herbs. So you're going to layer the herbs in the jar. 
And I have these cute little witch spoons. I know you've seen them, Ren, but mm-hmm. I don't I've, I don't know if I've talked about them before. I've almost stolen a couple from I you. I know. Mm-hmm. They are so adorable, I, but I use those. I pick them up. I look at them and I'm like, she won't miss she one. She won't notice. She's mm-hmm. got several. Yeah, exactly. She won't miss one. And then the little voice in my brain goes, no, you don't need to do that. You can just <laughs> buy your own. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. And I put it down. <laughs> But I used my cute little spoon and I put in a little bit into the the glass jar because and the herbs, each one has its own unique things. Generally, they're overall prosperity, but like basil is specific for attracting wealth and success. Cinnamon is for prosperity and good fortune. Mm-hmm. Mint is for money and abundance. And bay leaves are for wishes and manifestation, which is why bay leaves are the perfect thing that you put, you write your intention on them and burn them at New Year's or whatever, on Yule or whatever it is. Hmm. Maybe I'll just get, do that tomorrow. <laughs> do it every day. Mm-hmm. Then you add your crystals um, with your little spoon. I like to use crystal chips, honestly. I feel I, like that's better for a jar spell. But mm-hmm. there's something satisfying about like a chunk that's like in I there. I do. I do also use chunks because it just looks cool too. Mm-hmm. You've got all the little pieces, and then you've mm-hmm. got this big chunk of mm-hmm. of quartz it's or cool. whatever. It's mm-hmm. beautiful. And then you're going to add your written intention. You're going to fold your piece of paper with your written intention on it, and you place it inside the jar, and you visualize your intention coming to fruition as you do this. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to seal the jar. So you close the lid. Um, you could anoint the lid with a few drops of patchouli oil or mm-hmm. some other kind of oil to add a boost of prosperity energy. You're going to light your candle. You place the green candle on top of the jar or beside it. You light the candle and focus on your intention, visualizing the wealth and prosperity flowing into your life. And you allow the candle to burn for a few minutes. And what I do is that's when I drip the wax onto my lid to seal it Mm -hmm. and Ren for Christmas one year I think it was Christmas gave me a whole set of melting waxes and a little it's a little like tiny ladle looking thing you're looking at me confused you don't remember giving it to me Mm -hmm. it was this little a ladle looking thing and it it comes with this electric holder and you put it in that and you put these wax pieces into, oh yes, yes, and I, I can pour it. You, you got it for me for my jar spells, and you pour the color of whatever it is mm-hmm. over your mm-hmm. your jar to seal it. Yeah, and then you tie your green ribbon or your gold ribbon or whatever it is um, to seal all of the energy inside. And you might chant something like, "With this ribbon, I seal the energy of abundance and wealth into this jar. May prosperity flow into my life easily and effortlessly." Or you can make it rhyme or whatever it is you Mm -hmm. want to do. Mm -hmm. And then you find a place to put your prosperity jar. It might be on your altar. It might be in a windowsill. It might be somewhere that you see it every day. Like when you're doing dishes, you know, in the kitchen windowsill. Um, And each time you see the jar, remind yourself of your intention and feel gratitude for the prosperity that is coming to your life. So Hmm. that's... That's a pretty detailed. Yeah, I like that one. Spell. I'm hoping that satisfies the person that was very unhappy with us not yeah, getting can, into the magic. You can of it always all. interchange some of those herbs oh, for and crystals sure. if you're not really if if those if those don't align with why you're doing this prosperity jar spell, then obviously swap swap it out. I was going to say swap it out. Swap it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, like but, we've always said that just because green means money to someone else, it might be that white means that to you uh-huh, or pink yeah. means that to you or yeah. whatever. Maybe that's your lucky color or something mm-hmm, and you want to mm-hmm. use it. Yeah. But there were some uh, funny, funny, unusual ways that I found <laughs> that uh, you can incorporate prosperity magic into your life. Oh, I like Which, I like it, to hear these. It makes it easy, I would say. I would say it's like something you can do on a on a daily if you want to okay, or every okay. every now and then. It's not something you have to sit down and make this jar spill and have full intention and right. all of that. So uh, you can do money mantras with mundane activities, basically. So you can use daily activities to uh, as opportunities to kind of say your money mantras or your prosperity okay. mantras that you come up with. Okay. So brushing your teeth is an example. 
So as you brush your teeth, you can repeat a mantra like, I attract wealth and abundance effortlessly. Oh, how funny. And it's, it's, I do this, um, I can't remember. I haven't done it in a while because I found it wasn't quite working for me. Maybe because I wasn't as focused, mm-hmm. but it was, um, um, oh gosh, what was it called? Like, I'm just trying to think of the phrase that I used to say. Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like money comes to me easily. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if something happened, like where you have to pay for new tires or something, all of a sudden it, you'd be like, oh, it's okay. Oh, we'll get it okay. back type of thing. It's that so positive. That, that feeling. And, but you have to feel it inside. It's not just you saying it like and like right. fake it till you make it, which technically it is. But you have to feel it like you have to genuinely feel, oh, it's fine. Like we're all we'll get that money again later. Like it's fine. I mean, and that's the way magic works anyway. I think a lot of wannabe witches and and i've said this before i think anybody can be a witch yeah but a a lot of people think oh i'm gonna buy a book of spells and i'm just gonna read this spell and it's gonna come true that you have to put so much energy Mm -hmm. into your magic absolutely the Mm -hmm. energy out and a lot of people don't understand that Mm -hmm. yeah you have to feel it Mm mm-hmm like, and I don't know how else to describe it. I know, you have same. to feel it. And I'm pointing to my chest because that's where I feel mine. It's, it's it's right below my chest. It's like in my Mine's solar like plexus. In my chest, like mm-hmm. in my, like right below, like the esophagus dip, like in mm-hmm. my collarbone. It's right here. That's where so I feel right it. right where your heart the, is. Mine's the most right below my heart. Wholeheartedly, yeah. It's like, that's where I, I don't feel know mine. In my core, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's however you feel it. Like you mm-hmm. feel your magic. If it's maybe it's in your third eye, maybe and, it's or some knows? people it's in their hands. Yes. That's so how they feel the magic. Wherever you feel it, that's mm-hmm. you have to believe it, basically. Mm-hmm. You do. So um when you brush your teeth and you repeat a mantra like I attract wealth and abundance effortlessly, you have to feel it. Well, you might also want to do it in your head because if you're trying to say, I don't know, well, you might well, end up with something you don't want. <laughs> um, I didn't think that I would have to explain that as much, <laughs> but maybe I was to just you. Picturing myself, <laughs> yeah, yourself. Brushing my teeth, trying to say this out loud, going, What if I summon some demon or something? Oh, because... yeah, and you say something wrong. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Um, and then you can also, while taking a shower, you can visualize the water washing away financial blockages and making room for new opportunities. And you can also maybe say, I am cleansed of all obstacles to my prosperity. Oh, I, I like that. One. And you have to feel it. Remember, you have to feel it in your wherever you feel your magic. <laughs> the sigils are fun in the shower, too, because mm-hmm. it gets all steamed up like on my, on your shower wall. I like to do sigils and oh, you can yeah. do a, a simple prosperity sigil. Mm-hmm. That's true. While you're taking your shower. But also day. don't summon a demon either, because yeah, you can also do that. do that with sigils and the steam yeah, and all of that. Let, so let's not do that. So if you do do a sigil, make sure it's something that you've created through your own intention mm-hmm. or it's mm-hmm. a sigil that's already like made with a specific intention to you. Mm-hmm. Just make sure it's not anything, anything else. Um, and then you can also prepare meals with intention and infuse Our them with kitchen witch uh-huh. here and then infuse them with ingredients known for prosperity attracting properties so for instance basil is very well known for wealth and protection so you can add basil to your sauces your salads i was thinking mm-hmm. maybe spaghetti or a pizza mm. like oh some, anything like that like you mm-hmm. make your pizza all of that maybe a little homemade tomato sauce like we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. and then you sprinkle your basil on top after or before if you like the basil to be a little soggy mm-hmm. i don't really like it as soggy so usually i have a like my base pizza and then mm-hmm. I sprinkle it on after and it sticks to the cheese and the sauce okay. and it's delicious mm. but that that's known for wealth and protection you can do cinnamon i love cinnamon for mm-hmm. not as much eating wise it's not my favorite but you can sprinkle cinnamon on your breakfast oatmeal in your coffee whatever it may be to add financial luck but I, also I don't a... forget to blow cinnamon at your front door every Absolutely. every beginning of the month and i, it have, brings I have prosperity i have another luck. way to add cinnamon to food. I have you, I I don't know if you've, I think I've told you about this before. I make cinnamon toast. 
mm-hmm. where I toast bread and melt butter on it. And then you sprinkle cinnamon and sugar on it. And it is a wonderful breakfast food. It's it a great sounds, snack. It sounds good. It is very good, but it's Sounds also good. I'm something I'm trying to think of the logistics. <laughs> it's, it's not hard at all. It's very okay. easy. Very nice snack. Okay. And then again, like we we talked a little bit about bay leaves earlier, but you can write your financial goals on the bay leaves and then mm-hmm. add them to soups. So make sure that uh, it's not like an ink pen or something that'll come off. Like oh, yeah. Maybe write. How can you write on it? Hmm. Maybe get well, like have a little edible pens. There are edible pens, but I'm trying to think of something. Maybe you don't have to go and buy. Maybe you already mm-hmm. have it. Maybe if you dip like, um, if you have like a little like the edge of a fork or a little a toothpick, uh, toothpick or something, you can dip it in the sauce or whatever you're making, yeah. and write it into it, infuse it, you know, intention, and then throw it into your soup. And then obviously you always remove the bay leaves after you don't eat them, right? But uh, I just don't want any ink. Like, don't use ink on your food if you're going to be eating it. That's a very good point. Mm-hmm. You could also enchant your wallet or purse. So, oh. like, you can do a sigil on a piece of paper and place it in your wallet. Or you can carry a little crystal with you, like a small citrine or pyrite crystal in your wallet or purse to attract oh. wealth. You can anoint the edges of your wallet or purse with essential oils like patchouli. Hmm. I feel like it would make your bag smell different too. Like it. Yeah. But I don't like the, I don't like the feeling. I don't know if I would do that one. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Or you could, wow. What was that? Could. Could. (laughs) Could. You you could uh, (laughs) integrate magic into your financial transactions by like when you're paying bills Mm -hmm. right before paying bills light a green candle and visualize the money returning to you Mm. I think I'm gonna start doing that because I really hate to pay bills and it would be number one soothing to have a candle there because I love my candles and number Mm -hmm. two visualizing this money coming back would be less anxious than watching it go out the door Mm -hmm. Uh, keep a money jar on your desk where you can place your spare change and visualize it growing. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you log into your bank account, say a silent affirmation for prosperity and gratitude for your current funds. More money will come to me. Boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. No. Um, again, back with the the kitchen witchery, I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, I really wanted to come up with some like Something else that maybe isn't food related or maybe brushing your teeth or taking a shower related. It's tea time. You know, we love our tea. We all love a good tea time. So you can make a prosperity tea. So you can use herbal blends. Like uh, you can use mint for money or chamomile for attracting wealth. There's other ones that you could also use, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can can make a mint tea, uh, a a chamomile tea, a chamomile mint tea. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And then you can stir with intention. So you stir your tea clockwise while visualizing your financial goals saying, and you can also say, wealth and abundance flow to me. Uh, wealth mm-hmm. and abundance comes to me easily. You can any it's interchangeable. I, I'm, I'm stirring up a good time. <laughs> oh, that one's a good one. <laughs> She's like, okay, River. Okay. <laughs> um, but I thought that that would have been that would be something that I could do because I make either coffee or tea in the mornings every morning, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so that's something that I could make in the morning and just, just visualize while easy... I wake up and all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just an easy way to daily manifest prosperity yeah yeah and then uh you can also dress for prosperity which mm-hmm. i thought was pretty cool uh so you can pick the color that you wear and then that could go towards uh, your prosperity oh. so you can wear green or gold clothing to attract wealth or accessories like you know you know bracelets and necklaces earrings mm-hmm. facial jewelry if you have it uh, and you can change out the color to gold or whatever Um, And then you can also anoint your jewelry or the soles of your shoes with prosperity (gasps) oils, which I think is I love that idea. I have a specific bracelet. It's specific to put oils in and it absorbs it so it can have the smell. But Mm -hmm. I love the idea for witchery (laughs) and using it with some prosperity oil. So I have prosperity around my my wrist every every day. I love that. And then you can enchant your jewelry. So you can charge a piece of jewelry, like a ring or a necklace, with your financial intentions and wear it daily. Mm-hmm. 
which I like the idea, but I, I can't wear jewelry to bed or anything. Like it has to come off. <laughs> like I have, yeah. I have over-censored problems. I have sensory problems. <laughs> um, and then you can also combine physical activity with prosperity magic as well. So you can collect uh, natural items like stones or leaves that catch your eye during a walk. You can cleanse them and use them as prosperity amulets. Which That's I a think good is idea. Cool. Yeah. And then while walking, you can walk barefoot, which I like walking barefoot. I prefer it, but Me there's too. a lot of stuff like in the ground. You don't know if there's broken glass or some I sort of bug or go barefoot. stuff. And hence, I've broken several toes because mm -hmm. I end up kicking things because I'm but barefoot all the time. You can definitely walk barefoot in grass or soil and visualize absorbing the earth's abundance and energy and transferring it into your financial life or whatever whatever part of your life you want prosperity in. I love that idea. You can also use uh, prosperity magic in your workplace. So like you can create a small, discreet uh, desk altar. <laughs> <laughs> and with prosperity symbols like the crystals, a green plant or coins, or you could put a little potted plant and have coins in the potted plant. I mean, mm -hmm. and no one would know looking at yeah. that, that, oh, that's a, that's an altar. You're yeah. a witch, you know. Um, I would, I would probably do like a little plant and have mm, one clear quartz crystal or something like that. That means something that like infuse that mm -hmm. clear quartz with whatever mm -hmm. it is and have it with that plant, maybe a, a prosperity plant. You want to regularly cleanse your workspace with, you know, essential oil spray or mm -hmm. incense if you're allowed to. Some places aren't allowed you could to. spritz it with witchy water. <laughs> spritz it. Yeah, for sure. What is that? Um, uh, holy water. <laughs> holy. Psh, 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 psh. Yep. Psh. Um, but and you know, we, you know. <laughs> yeah, we would know. Uh, use your screensavers and desktop backgrounds with images for affirmations of abundance, you know, things that, that you're hoping to, mm -hmm. to bring into your life. Like if you really want that trip to the beach, you can have that as your screensaver. And mm -hmm. so every time you see it, it reminds you to think about that and to reaffirm that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then speaking of like screensavers, electrical prosperity practices are something that you can do. You can do um, on your on your phone, you can. Oh, do that's a good idea. Like a the digital background on your phone. You, yeah. There's digital apps. Um, you can do digital sigils. Create a digital sigil for a prosperity and set it as your wallpaper or on your lock screen. That's a good idea. You could also add a small, discreet prosperity affirmation or symbol to your email signature. You know, not nothing like a pentagram if you don't want that to be out there going yeah, to yeah. co-workers but something that means something to you design your own prosperity sigil and it goes out to the universe every time you send an email and then sleep or dream magic you could use your subconscious mind i was going to say unconscious mind but oh, that's oh, not that's the same not thing i think right. we've, <laughs> we've had this conversation before oh uh, yeah you, that's not quite right <laughs> you can make a dream pillow uh, with herbs like lavender and bay leaves and place that under your pillow to attract uh, wealth while you sleep. Mm -hmm. You, Like you said, right before going to bed, do a bedtime visualization. Spend a few minutes visualizing your financial goals and successes. Mm -hmm. Or this is another thing there's a lot of apps for these days, an affirmation video. Listen to prosperity oh, affirmations or meditation. That's a good Ooh, idea. You should do a prosperity meditation. In all my spare time. <laughs> I know. Uh, but we haven't, I will put we it haven't on my had list. one in a while. I know. I know. Let's not talk that about That would it. be good. <laughs> yes. But there was, there was so much more than I thought when we started. You know, I uh -huh. was like, we should do prosperity. And my whole thought was that charmed episode. And out of that, <laughs> we got this whole episode, which I feel like is a pretty good one. I hope it helped you all. Uh -huh. I mean, you can do our outro. Okay. So <laughs> if you uh, like what you heard, <laughs> you can find more out about us at www.c3witchypodcast.com. There we have links to all of our social medias. YouTube is our main one right now that we're trying to work mm -hmm. on. Please go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Watch our 
watch quote our podcast there. Um, yeah, just put it on in the background and it helps us. It helps us tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also reach us on any of our social media platforms. If you want to chat with us and talk to mm -hmm. us, we are people. You, If you have questions or <laughs> like, hey, I really want you to do this topic on your on one of your episodes. We would love to hear from you oh, guys. Oh, for sure. You can reach us anywhere. Um, you can also um, find our newsletter on our website as well. You can find uh, updates on our episodes and like what's going on. I don't think I updated it last week, but I should update it. Um, <laughs> maybe it's updated by this episode comes out. <laughs> but you can also find our merch on our website. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go directly to our merch, you can go to www.c3witchypodcastmerch.com. We still have our letha and Lamis out right now so mm -hmm. get it while you can because it's limited time we are working on getting a new website up and running so it's better prices better everything we're working on it we are um i don't so, think there's anything else yeah thank you guys so mm -hmm. much for listening we appreciate you a lot yes um we'll be back we'll be back and until then stay witchy Woo!